Hello and welcome to Chesapeake Weekly. Well, flu season is here, so it's time to get your flu shot. And yes, you should get your flu shot even if you've had your COVID-19 shot. One does not cover the other, so definitely get both. But other than the vaccine, most mitigation efforts we've learned throughout the COVID-19 experience also help us battle the flu. Things like masking, hand washing, staying home when you're sick are all great weapons in our arsenal against respiratory illnesses. Flu and COVID are very similar in the fact that they are respiratory spread. Okay. So the mask and the social distancing that we're using is talking about droplet spread. That's why we're saying droplets don't spread farther than six feet. If you can't maintain the six foot distance, then you wear a mask to protect other people. What we're trying to do is keep the respiratory um, out from you away from other people. It's you, you're wearing the mask to protect other people, not the right. other way around. Okay. You do have a little bit of protection, that's obvious. I mean, your nose and mouth are covered, but um, the, the cloth masks really are used to keep the respiratory droplets out of the environment. So that works for flu as well as it does with uh, COVID. Um, somebody has asked before, if why, why don't we do this with flu season? Yeah. I would have loved to do it with flu season. Um, the number one takeaway with the flu season that I hope carries over because of COVID in the future is for people to stay home when they're sick. Mm. That's the biggest thing that we're talking about with COVID. Everybody's heard this isolation term, and that means staying home when you're sick. If, if we got everybody to do that, we would not have as much of any of this in the environment as we do. Now, if you haven't yet, but are hoping to get your COVID-19 vaccination, they're quite easy to come by these days. Just talk to your primary care physician or your local pharmacist. You can also learn more and find vaccine clinics near you at vaccines.gov. It is Fire Prevention Week. This year's theme is learn the sounds of fire safety. Did you know that your smoke and carbon monoxide alarms make different sounds depending on what they're trying to tell you? It's important that you and everyone in your household know the sounds. Here are a few Chesapeake firefighters from Station 14 with more. This year's Fire Prevention Week campaign, Learn the Sounds of Fire Safety, works to educate everyone on the different sounds that smoke and carbon monoxide detectors make. Knowing what to do and what not to do will help to keep you and your family safe. If your alarm makes a chirping sound, this usually means there's an issue, such as a low battery or faulty detector. It's important that detectors are maintained and replaced every 10 years. Be sure to choose detectors that are listed with a testing laboratory. In the event of a fire, you may have as little as two minutes to escape safely. This is why smoke alarms need to be in every bedroom, outside sleeping areas such as hallways, and on every level of a house. Do not put smoke alarms in a bathroom or in the kitchen. Here are some things you should not do when an alarm sounds. Continue watching TV. Play with your pet. Finish eating your favorite dessert. Phone a friend. Or make a TikTok video. The Chesapeake Fire Department wants you to remember, when you hear a chirp, make a change. This could be as simple as changing a battery. But when you hear a beep, get on your feet. Get out, stay out, and call 911. This week is a really good time for you to go over your fire escape plan with the family and to test out your smoke alarms. The kids can get involved as well. The fire department is hosting a chalk drawing contest. Just create a drawing on the sidewalk or driveway with a fire safety message. Snap a pic and share it on Facebook with the hashtag Chesapeake Fire Safety Rocks. Or you can also email it to tallen at cityofchesapeake.net no later than October 15th. Learn more at cityofchesapeake.net slash fire. It's a beautiful time of year to be outside. And if washing your car is on your weekend to-do list, be aware that you could be harming your waterways. Here's AskHRGreen.org's Katie Cullifer with the info. So the way we wash our car can actually have an impact on the environment. Washing your car in your driveway or in the street actually allows for all that wash water which carries soap and dirt and grease to run across the pavement directly into our storm drains and directly to our local waterways untreated. Um, if you're going to wash your car at home, there are some simple tips you can use to do it safely so that your clean car is not harming the environment. 
Um, the first tip is to wash on a grassy or gravel area. That's going to allow the wash water to absorb into the ground and not run off to our storm drains. Secondly, you want to look for phosphate-free, water-based cleaners. Um, those are going to be the safest. Um, use a wash bucket and make sure you wring your sponges into the wash bucket when you're done. Um, pour that wash bucket down the drain so it can go to the sanitary sewer system. Don't pour it um, into the street where it can get into the storm drain system. The really the best way to be environmentally friendly and have a clean car is to visit a commercial car wash. They uh, recycle some of that wash water and they automatically send it to the sanitary sewer system where it can be cleaned before being released to the environment. So if you're going to do it the more eco-conscious, uh, the budget-friendly way, um, think of those tips I just mentioned to always wash on the grass or gravel. Um, and that way you know that your clean car is going to result in a clean Chesapeake Bay and clean waterways for us. AskHRGreen.org is our region's go-to source for all things environmental. And as you heard from Katie, oftentimes the green way is actually the easiest way to go. So don't be intimidated by making the environmentally friendly choice. Find more green tips and tricks at AskHRGreen.org. Well, after closing to the public in March of 2020 due to the pandemic, the Chesapeake Planetarium is back open for regular programming starting on October 14th. Free public programming is available on Thursdays at 8 p.m. Now, you do have to reserve your seat ahead of time by calling 547-0153. Seating capacity is limited and masks are required. Now, if you've never been to the aquarium, it's a must-do here in Chesapeake. Here's a clip from an episode of Peak Life where Karen Meyer spoke with the planetarium director, Dr. Robert Hitt. But the technology inside mm -hmm. is a very graphic, very computer-based, and we can literally cover the entire dome okay. with amazing images. That's a cool shot. This is a shot of the interior mm -hmm. showing a panorama around the edge of the dome and the original machine, which is still there, but we've lowered the machine down into the floor. It's on an elevator to make room for the new equipment. This is the process oh, okay. of uh, getting the machine ready to be lowered mm -hmm. into the floor. And uh, we had to clear the view across the dome because the there are two projectors that cover the entire dome. One shoots north, one shoots south, and they cover the dome in a seamless picture. Mm, that's pretty, that's pretty amazing. There you are. Yeah, it, it's hard. This new system mm -hmm. uses a computer, a mouse, and a keyboard, and I'm used to turning knobs and buttons. <laughs> so I can find the knobs and buttons in the dark, but reading the keyboard and the screen is tough. And this is the menu for the new planetarium. The picture on the right shows what's going to appear in the dome, and on the left are all the menus that you can select to cause those images to show up. And now, would you have ever foreseen this back when you started as director of the planetarium? No, Almost not, 50 years ago? I know. No, not really. But what this can do is amazing because mm -hmm. before, if I wanted to put something in the dome, there were like 25 slide projectors. I would have to load slides mm -hmm. in and program those to come up. Now, with a mouse and a keystroke, I can cause multiple images to come up, and it usually works very, very efficiently. So it's quite nice. nice. Well, Chesapeake Public Schools recently hosted a webinar with the Chesapeake Health Department entitled COVID-19 Mitigation in Our Schools. Panelists went over protocols related to quarantine and isolation, demonstrated how to use the data dashboard, and provided information related to student-athlete testing. A bunch of very helpful information was shared. So if you missed that live webinar, it was recorded and is now available for viewing on the Chesapeake Public Schools YouTube page. It's Mental Illness Awareness Week, and what better time than now to start having conversations about our mental health? So as he does every year, Sam Boone, a mental health advocate and Chesapeake School Board member, is hosting a mental health forum in partnership with the National Alliance on Mental Illness of Coastal Virginia. So on Thursday, October 14th at 7 p.m., Join Mr. Boone and several mental health advocates virtually through Zoom and on Facebook Live for a conversation on mental health. It's free and open to anyone. Learn more at facebook.com slash NAMI Coastal VA. Monday is Columbus Day, so with that comes some city schedule changes. All city offices, courts, community centers, and libraries will be closed on Monday, October 11th. The Chesapeake Visitor Center will be open from 10 to 4. Now, the voter registrar's office and all satellite voting locations will also be closed, so there's no early voting on October 11th, but there will be no changes to trash or recycling collections. Everything will go back to normal on Tuesday, October 12th. 
Well, we leave you now with a preview of all the fun stuff Parks, Recreation, and Tourism has coming up throughout the week. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again next week.